Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE 12933 here, and in today's Cisco Certification Exam Tutorial, we're going to talk about getting the home field advantage on exam day. There are definitely things you can do before and on exam day to maximize your performance, and that's what it's all about, because we're not just studying for this exam, we've got to be ready to perform on exam day. And the home field advantage that I mentioned, every sport has this. And we talk about, you know, why does a team have the home field advantage or how much it is. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But you can give yourself the same home field advantage that a sports team has on your exam day. And in American football, for example, the home field advantage is considered to be about three points. Your home field advantage can be worth even more because when you're maximizing your exam performance, when you're comfortable, you've reduced anxiety levels, and you're avoiding unpleasant surprises, which we're definitely going to be talking about in this video, your home field advantage can be worth a couple of questions. We're talking 30, 40, 50 points, and that can often be the difference between having a good exam day and a bad exam day, right? So we definitely want this home field advantage. Now, what am I talking about when I use that term anyway in sports? You know, you hear it all the time, but what exactly is it? It's really a level of comfort for the home team. They're not going to be surprised by anything. They know they've got a supportive crowd. They know how to get to the stadium, for one. That never hurts. But also, they're not going to have any unpleasant surprises. And we're going to do the same thing for you and maximize your exam day performance by giving you that home field advantage. Now, as I mentioned, knowing where the game is going to be played always helps, and this is something I've mentioned in several videos. Make sure you know where the testing center is, especially if you've never taken an exam before. Because as I say sarcastically, I admit, on the board, uh, MapQuest and other internet uh, directional applications, they're sometimes incorrect. And another thing that I would recommend you do is to call the testing center the day before your test. Make sure they're going to be open. You know, you never know. Uh, I was once able to make an exam uh, reservation for July 4, which kind of surprised me. Then when I got to the testing center, it turned out they were closed. So always call the testing center the day before your test and just confirm your appointment. As I've also mentioned before, I get plenty of rest the night before your exam. I'm still surprised to this day after about 15 years of taking certification exams how many people show up at the center and they're just exhausted. Uh, by 9 p.m. the night before your exam, the die is cast. You're not going to learn anything new. And be sure to allow for rush hour traffic if you are a morning tester, as I am. Because as we all know, trips that take 15 minutes in the afternoon can take 45 or more in the morning. A couple of exam day tips I want to give you. The first one is, you're, and I want you to avoid being surprised by this, you cannot take your own markers or paper into the testing room. So if you have, you know, color codes for your protocols, and, you know, that goes for the IE lab, too. You can't even do it there. And if you're working on the NA or NP and you like to diagram things out in certain colors, you're not going to be able to do that on exam day. One thing I do want you to do, though, when they hand you that dry erase board and marker, two things, only one of which I put on the board. First off, always test it. Take the cap off right then and there and just draw something on the dry erase board. Make sure it's working. You don't want that clock to be running and you get to say like question 12. It's like, oh, a subnet in question. And then you take the top off your marker and find out it doesn't work. Because now you got to go get the proctor, you got to get a new marker, and you're going to burn some time. Also, uh, make absolutely sure they hand you something to clean that board off with because occasionally they won't do that and I'll ask for something and then they'll hand you something. Again, you don't want to say, hey, I got my board filled up here, I need to clean it and the clock is running and you got to go find the proctor. So a couple of real world situations to look at for there. You want to work with Cisco's simulator question engine before you take the exam. Now simulator questions bring up a lot of anxiety and sometimes with uh, the candidates and the Bulldogs that I work with, it seems to be more about using Cisco's actual engine rather than being told you know, okay, uh, configure frame relay, you know, set up this map, something like that. Cisco has their engine online in their prep center and I think one other location. Uh, that's kind of your homework assignment for this video is to go find it. Uh, it will not be difficult, but it's a little clumsy to work with at first just because it's different. 
uh, you know, and some of the router IP addresses can be a little hard to see the first time. So I strongly recommend you find this before your exam and practice working with it a bit. Also, on the day of your exam, you'll have the opportunity to take a little practice exam. You know, they'll show you one question type of each one. And earlier in my certification testing career, uh, I would just blow past that because it's like, okay, I know how to answer a radio button question. I know how to answer a multiple choice question. But they'll also have that simulator question in there, or the simulator engine, I should say. And that just gives you one last chance to kind of play with it a little bit and just get comfortable with it. I compare that to warm-up pitching, you know, before you're actually facing a live batter, to use another sports analogy. So even if you're comfortable with it, I would just go ahead and take that little practice exam, the practice test they offer you before the actual exam and just look at each question type. I know I know you know how to answer a multiple choice question and click in a radio box, but it does not hurt you to look at that simulator engine one more time. And definitely this next tip, I get a lot of email on this by people who are surprised by this one, so I'm happy to share this with you. You cannot go back and reread questions or change your answers once you click next in a Cisco exam. I think some vendors still allow you to mark questions and then come back to them at the end of your test before you actually click OK I'm done and Cisco exams used to do that so if it's been a couple of years since you've taken one and you go in you might be surprised by this but you can no longer do like say what I used to do I admit is I would go through the exam and just you know pick off the easy questions you know the ones you know immediately and if I saw a question that I thought would take a few minutes to diagram I'd say okay I'm coming back to that one at the end. I'll go ahead and get the short questions done first. Well, they don't let you do that anymore. Uh, so I just want you to be uh, ready for that because what Cisco exams used to do is give you this grid at the end and you could see the number of questions that you had marked and say, okay, I want to go back to number 22, want to go back to number 37. Those days are long gone. So especially for those of you who took some Cisco exams a while back and now you're coming back, be aware that once you answer a question and you click next and it goes to the next one, you are not able to go back. These simple tips, and a couple of these I've repeated for years, but I get emails from students all over the world who say these little tips, getting that rest, making sure your board marker works, making sure you've worked with the question engine, and then avoiding your surprises like that, and of course, knowing where the game is going to be played. These things really do give you the home field advantage that will maximize your performance on exam day. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE 12933.